Today, we will tell you the storyline of Tokyo Revengers and Tokyo Revengers 2, Bloody Halloween, Destiny. One night in the parking lot of a building, a car was chasing a Yakuza member. The car mercilessly ran over the man, leaving him on the brink of death. Inside the car were two leaders of Tokyo Manji, Kisaki Tata the vice leader and Sano Manjuro, or Mikey, the leader. Realizing the man was still alive, they ran over him once again, killing him instantly. That day in a slum apartment, a man named Takemichi just woke up and was about to eat a stale bread he found on the floor when he suddenly heard the news reporting two victims of a gang ward named Tachibana Naoto and Tachibana Hinata. He was shocked when he heard those names as they were two close names to him. Hinata was his girlfriend and Naoto was her younger brother. He then went to work while still reading about the news on his phone. He was reprimanded by his boss, who thought he was watching an adult film. Later that day, Takemichi was waiting for a train when suddenly, someone pushed him from the platform just before the train stopped. He was about to be hit by the train when suddenly, something strange happened. He was teleported to another place where he looked totally different from what he was before. Soon, four people approached him and he knew they were his high school friends from Mizo High School. They were Akun, Yamajishi, Makoto, and Takuya. Takemichi was confused as to what just happened to him and thought that he was witnessing a flashback before he died. His friends were confused to hear him. When he passed by in front of a mirror, he saw that he had changed and he was him when he was in high school with his delinquent look. Akun then told him that they were about to fight students from another school and asked him to call his cousin who was a senior in that school so they had some backing. But when Takemichi checked his phone, he was shocked when his phone showed that it was 10th of July 2010. Takemichi decided to go on with the flashback and went with his friends to fight some students from another school. They caused commotion there when suddenly, some seniors from the school, led by someone named Kiyomasa, showed up. He was a member of Tokyo Manji, a fierce gang around the area. They were scared, and Takemichi kept trying to contact his cousin, but soon, his cousin who turned out to be the senior's underling showed up. He was bullied and beaten. Seeing that made all five of them scared, they were beaten to a pulp without the slightest mercy. That was when Takemichi remembered that that was the start of their days of being bullied by Kiyomasa for the rest of their lives, causing him to leave school and ruining his future. That evening, before leaving, Kiyomasa said that they would never leave him and would be Tokyo Manji's slave for the rest of their lives. After Kiyomasa left, Takemichi didn't expect such a horrible flashback could feel so real. While limping, he began walking to Hinata's place. He missed her so much and wanted to see her again. When he arrived at her place and was about to knock on the door, Hinata showed up and made Takemichi shed tears to see his beloved girl after a long time. Seeing her boyfriend battered, Hinata quickly treated him. Takemichi told her that he missed her so much, but Hinata said that they could always see each other at school, not knowing that the Takemichi in front of her was the one from the future. Takemichi then told her that he would die in 10 years, but Hinata denied it while saying that he was too strong to die that fast, and even though he would really die, she would always be by his side until the time came. Takemichi then asked why she wanted to date a coward like him. Hinata just smiled to hear that. After leaving Hinata's house and sitting alone in the park, Takemichi saw a boy who turned out to be Nato being bullied and decided to help him, only to end up embarrassing himself in front of them. After the bullies left, Takemichi asked Nato why he didn't defend himself. Naona said that he just didn't want to cause a fight. Takemichi then remembered that in 10 years, he and Hinata would die in a gang war and immediately told Naoto to protect his sister. Seeing that Takemichi didn't seem to be lying, Naoto agreed and shook his hand. Suddenly, they both felt something strange and Takemichi suddenly woke up on a hospital bed and found Naoto still alive. Turned out, thanks to his warning 10 years ago, Naoto managed to save himself, but sadly, his sister still died in that gang war. Naoto explained that it was all thanks to his warning and made Takemichi realize that what he just experienced was more than just a flashback, but a travel back in time. Naoto had become a police officer and was the one who saved Takemichi from getting hit by the train.
He then asked Takemichi to save Hinata. Nano explained that Tokyo Manji was once just a bike gang that gained so much power and became a huge criminal organization as they were involved in the drug business and murders recently. He then showed the picture of Mikey and Kisaki and said that Tokyo Manji would never become an evil organization if these two didn't meet so he wanted Takemichi to travel to the past and prevent that from happening. He also realized from the time they shook hands in the park 10 years ago that they had to shake hands for Takemichi to time travel. Takemichi was too scared to do that, but when Naruto said that he was the only hope for Hinata to be alive, Takemichi agreed by shaking Naruto's hand. When Takemichi realized it, he was beaten by someone. His friends told him that they were in a fighting arena held by Kiyomasa. Takuya was the next to fight, making Takemichi worried knowing Takuya was the weakest among them. He was surely beaten into a pulp. Suddenly, Akun walked towards Kiyomasa and Takemichi, realized this was the moment when Akun stabbed Kiyomasa and ended up in prison, so he stopped him just before he did it and said that he would do it instead. Takemichi shouted calling for Kiyomasa for a duel. He said that if he won the fight, he wanted him to bring him to Mikey, Tokyo Manji's leader. Suddenly, Kiyomasa beat his stomach because he dared to mention their leader's name. He beat Takemichi repeatedly, and Takemichi always stood back up. While remembering Hinata, he had made up his mind to meet Mikey. Kiyomasa took a baseball bat and was about to beat Takemichi with it when suddenly, two people came and everyone immediately bowed down. Turned out that they were Draken, the vice leader of Tokyo Manji, and Mikey, the leader itself. After knowing that Kiyomasa was the one responsible for the fight, Draken charged at him and made him scared. Mikey approached Takemichi and made him scared, but unexpectedly, he asked Takemichi to be his friend. Mikey then said that what they were doing would taint Tokyo Manji's image, and he didn't want that. He then kicked Kiyomasa, making him fall to the ground in one hit. Draken warned everyone not to do such a thing again, and then left from there. When Takemichi walked home with his friends, Akun praised him for standing up for them. Takemichi went to see Hinata again and went to the rooftop to see fireworks. Hinata then said that if he was a boy, he would protect Takemichi at all cost, so Takemichi responded by saying that he would be the one to protect her instead. He then reached to hold Hinata's hand, only to end up holding Naruto's hand. He realized that it would send him back to the future. When returned, Nado revealed that during his travel back in time, Takemichi's body would be in a coma, and he would travel back in time exactly 10 years from the time in the present and vice versa, which means that if he spent a week in the past, his body in the present would be in a coma for a week too. After hearing the explanation, Takemichi told Naoto that he had managed to meet Mikey, but not Kisaki. Nado had an idea namely for Takemichi to kill Mikey so that Mikey wouldn't meet Kisaki and they could prevent Hinata from being killed. Takemichi then returned to the past. He found himself in his school and saw Mikey and Draken there, beating some delinquents. After that, Mikey invited him to go for a walk. After seeing how strong Mikey and Draken were, Takemichi realized that he didn't have a chance to kill him. When they were about to leave, Hinata suddenly appeared. She confronted Mikey and slapped his face to stop him from bringing Takemichi. Draken came forward and held Hinata's arm hard, but Hinata didn't back down. She wanted to protect Takemichi. Seeing his girlfriend tremble in fear, Takemichi told Draken to let go of her hand. He said that he would do anything to protect Hinata. Mikey approached him and threatened to kill him, but suddenly he smiled and said that he was just kidding. He said that he couldn't possibly beat up a woman. Hinata finally realized that Mikey and Draken were Takemichi's friends and apologized for suspecting them. After that, Takemichi went with them both. On the street, Takemichi asked why Mikey wanted to be friends with him. Mikey then told him that he once had an older brother who, despite being weak, never feared anyone and would challenge anybody for a fight. Mikey said that Takemichi reminded him of his brother. Back then, his brother was the leader of a very big gang. At that time, the gang members were very cool and they fought bravely. Mikey said that he wanted to bring back that image. 
He said that in Tokyo Manji, every member was willing to risk their lives for their friends, just like what Takemichi did. He wanted Takemichi to join Tokyo Manji. Draken then said that many could fight, but only a few were willing to face anyone to protect other people. They then invited Takemichi to the gang meeting. In the evening, Takemichi went to the gang meeting, but because no one knew him, he was bullied by the gang members. He also met Kiyomasa again, who still had a grudge against him. A few moments later, Mikey and Draken came and everyone immediately lined up. When Draken saw Kiyomasa, he expelled him because of the previous mistake he made and Kiyomasa had to leave disappointedly. Soon after, the meeting started. During the meeting, the captain of the second division, Mitsuya said that their friend, Passion, the captain of the third division, was beaten by another gang called Mobius led by Osanai. Mobius beat him and his girlfriend to a pulp. Mikey then asked Patchen whether he wanted to avenge what they had done to him. While crying, Patchen said that he wanted revenge on them so badly then, while smiling, Mikey asked everyone to help and everyone enthusiastically shouted yes. He then ordered everyone to destroy Mobius. Everyone was ready. On the 13th of July, the war between them would begin. Meanwhile, Kiyomasa was seen meeting Kisaki. After returning to the present, Takemichi told Naoto that Mikey was a good person and that he must not be the one who caused the gang war that killed Hinata. There must be something that changed him. Takemichi then looked at the photo of Akun, who became an important figure in Tokyo Manji. Because Akun didn't stab Kiyomasa in the past, the present changed quite a bit. Takemichi got an idea, and he asked Naoto to take him to the bar where Akun worked. He entered the bar and asked to meet Akun, who turned out had been waiting for him. Akun took him to the rooftop. There, Takemichi praised him for his success. Turned out that Akun knew Takemichi was accompanied by a policeman named Naoto, Hinata's brother. He also knew that it was Naoto who saved Takemichi at the train station. He knew that because it turned out that Akun was the one who had pushed him from the platform. Takemichi was shocked to hear that. Akun said that he was forced to do it because he was afraid of Kisaki. Takemichi refused to believe it because for him, Akun was his best friend. Akun cried when he heard it. Akun revealed that he was under Kisaki's threat. He then said that if Draken was still alive, Tokyo Manji wouldn't be as evil as they knew. Surprisingly, it turned out Akun knew that Takemichi could travel back in time. He was suspicious because Takemichi knew his intention to stab Kiyomasa in the past. Akun approached Tatamichi and said that he missed the good old days when they used to joke around with the others. Akun then walked on the edge of the building. He knew the struggle in Takemichi's shoulder and while crying, he asked Takemichi to save everyone. He suddenly jumped from the building and died instantly. Takemichi screamed hysterically when he saw his friend's dead body. In the afternoon, Naoto met Takemichi in his apartment. Takemichi asked Naoto to investigate Draken's death. He said that if Draken didn't die, then Tokyo Manji wouldn't be as it was. Naoto was surprised to see Takemichi, who had the passion to save everyone. He then shook Takemichi's hand to thank him, unconsciously sending him back to the past. When Takemichi realized it, he was on a bicycle with a coon. He was so happy to see him again and immediately hugged him. After that, he immediately went to see Nato, but before leaving, he told Akun that he would surely achieve his dream of becoming a beautician. He arrived at Nato's house only to be greeted by Hinata, who told him that Nato was on holiday. She then reminded him that he promised to take her to the festival tomorrow. Upon hearing that, Takemichi remembered that tomorrow was the day Draken died when Tokyo Manji went to war against Mobius, so he immediately left to meet Mikey. After finding Mikey, Takemichi followed him and Draken to a hospital. From afar, he saw Mikey and Draken visited Patchen's girlfriend, who was treated there after being beaten by Mobius earlier. She was in a coma. Her entire body was battered and one of her eyes was blinded. She might become disabled for life. A few moments later, the woman's parents came out. The person scolded Mikey and Draken, who had harmed their child. Draken bowed and forced Mikey to bow. He apologized and said that it was their fault. The old man cursed Mikey and Draken, 
calling them names. For a moment, Mikey felt angry because he was innocent, but Draken forced him to keep bowing down. The old man cried his heart out, wanting his child to return to normal. Mikey was finally touched and felt sad to hear this. After the girl's parents left, Draken told Mikey that all Tokyo Manji members also had families. He didn't want to make people around them cry. The problems they face must be solved by themselves. Drajin wanted Mikey to have a heart that cared for other people. Mikey apologized and was grateful to have Draken by his side. From afar, Takemichi who saw this became even more convinced that the only person who could control Mickey was Draken. If Draken remained alive, Tokyo Manji would not change. Takemichi then chased them to a warehouse where he confronted Mikey and asked him to give up his intention to have a gang war with Mobius. He said that he had a hunch someone would die. Mikey then answered that he couldn't stop this war because Mobius had arrived. Just a moment later, Dozens of Mobius members appeared from behind and surrounded them. The leader, Osane, appeared and challenged Mikey to a fight, but Patchen stopped Mikey and said that that was his fight. Patchen charged to attack, but his ability is far below that of Osane. He was repeatedly punched, but he still didn't give up. Takemichi asked Mikey to help him, but Mikey thought that Patchen hadn't lost. Ozanai kept beating Patchen until he was battered, but Mikey still thought that Patchen wasn't losing yet. Mikey's words were laughed at by members of Mobius, so he stepped forward, and with just two kicks, he succeeded in beating Ozanai. He then said he would kill whoever thought that Patchen was losing. Everyone was silent, stunned by his words. Mikey said that if he was still alive, Tokyo Manji would not lose to anyone. Draken then came forward and announced that Mobius would join Tokyo Manji. Suddenly, Ozanai stood up and held a broken glass, about to stab Mikey with it. Luckily, Draken managed to hold him back while his hand was injured. He then beat Ozanai. Meanwhile, Takemichi was relieved knowing Draken didn't die. The next day, Takemichi accompanied Hinata at the festival. Meanwhile, inside Mobius headquarters, Kisaki whispered something in Ozanai's ear. Back at the festival, Takemichi saw Mobius gang members wandering around. He was suspicious and decided to check. In another place, Draken was seen waiting for Mikey alone, while on the other hand, in a warehouse, Mikey and the others were seen waiting for Draken. It seemed like they had fallen into a trap. At the festival, from a distance, Takemichi looked at Kiyomasa, who was now a member of Mobius, and was given a knife to kill Draken who had thrown him out of Tokyo Manji. The gang war wasn't over yet. Suddenly, several people appeared and captured Takemichi. In another place, Mikey finally realized that he had been trapped by Osnai, so he rushed, went to find Draken. He even almost crashed into Kisaki, but he didn't care and continued his journey. Meanwhile, Draken was attacked by dozens of Mobius members. Draken with his strength was able to survive. On the other hand, Takemichi was beaten by Kiyomasa and his friends, who then tied him with duct tape. Soon after, Hinata came and tried to untie him. Takemichi instead told Hinata to leave him. He felt that what he did was always in vain. He knew that he wasn't as strong as Mikey or Draken, so he couldn't protect anyone. Hinata then kissed Takemichi and reminded him of the first time they met. At that time, Hinata was bothered by members of the Yakuza. Suddenly, Takemichi showed up and began acting strangely, as if he wanted to fight the man but ended up acting like a maniac, making the man feel disgusted and leave. Takemichi said that that was the only thing he could do to help her. Hinata then said that even though he wasn't as strong as Mikey or Draken, he was willing to cry and suffer for the sake of others. She said that that was the thing that made her love him. Hinata then removed the duct tape on Takemichi's body. After hearing what she just said, Takemichi realized that even though he didn't have the strength, he would still protect her. He then got up and went to look for the Draken. Somewhere else, Draken was still fighting alone against dozens of Mobius members, and was about to lose when suddenly he heard Mikey's bike from outside. Mikey came with other Tokyo Manji members behind him. Mikey asked who was the mastermind behind all this, but Azane instead challenged him to fight again. Mikey then told Draken to get ready because they were going to party tonight. 
the fight against Mobius started once again, and even though they were outnumbered, Tokyo Manji didn't back down. Meanwhile, someone was seen watching the fight from above. A few moments later, Takemichi arrived at the battle and saw Draken who was stabbed by Kiyomasa, who came from behind. After losing a lot of blood, Draken fell to the ground. Mikey saw that and tried to approach him, but he was continuously blocked by members of Mobius. Even Ozane stepped forward to prevent him from getting closer to Draken. Mikey then ordered Takemichi to save Draken because he was the only one who could do that. Takemichi carried Draken in his back as fast as he could while the other tried to keep the other Mobius members from attacking Takemichi. Akun and the others also showed up to help. After calling an ambulance, Takemichi carried Draken to the main road. In the alley, Kiyomasa stopped them. Draken saw it and asked Takemichi to put him down so he could fight Kiyomasa. Takemichi did so, but instead of running away, Takemichi stood up and decided to face Kiyomasa, and for the first time, he managed to land a hit on Kiyomasa's face. Even though he wasn't a match for Kiyomasa, he still tried to get up. Even though he got hit repeatedly, he didn't give up. He kept trying to get up. He then jumped and choked Kiyomasa with all his strength, and in the end, managed to bring him down. On the other hand, Mikey was able to defeat all the members of Mobius. Long story short, Draken was brought to the hospital, and all the members of Tokyo Manji were seen waiting for Draken who was undergoing surgery. Mikey then came to give food to all of them. He told everyone to calm down. He was sure that Draken would survive because he had promised to accompany him until the end. Finally, a few moments later, the surgeon showed up and said that Draken had been saved. Everyone cheered and was happy to hear it. Takemichi saw Mikey, who was leaving the crowd, and decided to follow him. From a distance, he witnessed Mikey in the corner and started to shed tears of joy, knowing that Draken was okay. Takemichi returned to the present. He accidentally ran past a coon who had succeeded in becoming a beautician. In another place, Nato was shocked to see the photo of the tattoo on Mikey's neck that had disappeared. Meanwhile, Takemichi went to Hinata's house, and finally, he could see Hinata again. He managed to save her from the gang war that would kill her. In the morning, Takemichi woke up after his neighbor yelled at him because of his alarm clock and told him to turn it off. Takemichi was still unsure whether he had succeeded in changing the present or if it was all just a dream. At work, Takemichi got a message from Hinata asking him to meet. He was very happy because the message proved that everything was real and not just a dream. In the past, exactly 10 years ago, a brawl between the 3rd Division of Tokyo Manji Gangs and the Valhalla broke out. Tokyo Manji was losing when suddenly a man with earrings and a claw tattoo on his neck appeared and beat one of them. Valhalla kept beating Tokyo Manji while mocking them. They even threw some of them from the bridge. Pachin, the third division leader, suffered the most as Valhalla kept beating him. Suddenly, another man came and said that he would destroy Tokyo Manji while belittling Mikey and Draken. After that, they stripped Pachin's Tokyo Manji jacket and burned it down. Pachin couldn't accept what they did to him and his gang, so he took a crowbar and stabbed one of the Valhalla's members. Because of that, he ended up in jail. At the present time, Takemichi was meeting with Hinata in Nodo's room. Nato felt a little bit awkward seeing them and decided to leave. After that, Hinata drove her car with Takemichi and asked him to a date since it was almost Halloween. When they arrived at the park, Hinata said that the park brought a nostalgic feeling to her, as it was the place where she was dumped by her boyfriend. Takemichi mumbled while saying that her boyfriend messed up by dumping her, not knowing that the one she meant was himself. After finding out, Takemichi excused himself to the toilet. There he questioned himself because what he remembered was that he was dumped by Hinata and not the other way around. He decided to confess his feelings once again, but when he returned to her, she wasn't there anymore. Turned out that she was in her car, looking at a photo of her and Takemichi back when they were still in high school. Takemichi looked for her and met someone on his way, mumbling about him being not in the car and finishing someone. Takemichi ignored him and kept looking for Hinata until finally he found her inside the car, but when he was about to approach her, 
Another car crashed from behind, and Hinata's car immediately caught fire. He was shocked and immediately ran to her to save her. Hinata stopped him because he was stuck and had lost a lot of blood. Takemichi said that he still and always loved her and Hinata was so happy to hear that. She then told him to leave her but Takemichi refused. Hinata pushed him just before the car blew up and killed her. He was devastated to see her die right in front of his eyes and swore that he would return to the past to save her. He swore that he would be Tokyo Manji's leader just to save her. The next day at the funeral, Takemichi met Naoto and told him that he wanted to return to the past once again to save Hinata, but Naoto stopped him, saying that no matter how hard they tried, Hinata would still die. He also said that it was Akun, Takemichi's best friend, who crashed Hinata's car from behind. Takemichi said that if saving Draken wasn't enough to save Hinata, he would be Tokyo Manji's leader to get rid of everything that could endanger her. Hearing that, Naoto decided to try once again to save Hinata. He would do an investigation regarding it. Long story short, after the investigation, Naoto took Takemichi to the prison to meet Draken. Turned out, after Takemichi returned from the past, the future changed a bit. Draken wasn't in Tokyo Manji anymore as he was in prison and charged with the death penalty. Takemichi asked what happened to Draken, so Draken told him everything. He once went rampage in a commercial building and killed several members of Valhalla after being trapped by Kisaki. Turned out that Kisaki had planned everything to keep Draken in prison. Tokyo Manji had become a criminal organization thanks to Kisaki. He said that if only he could stop him from becoming a part of Tokyo Manji, then this would never happen. He swore that if he could return to the past, he would kill Kisaki for the sake of Tokyo Manji and his friends. Soon, the visit session was over, and before Draken returned to his cell, he told Taikimichi to run away from Tokyo because Kisaki was also targeting him. Kisaki was targeting everything dear to Mikey, and Taikimichi was one of them. Nano said that Kisaki had full control of Tokyo Manji, and since he had backing in the police department, nobody could touch him. Takemichi couldn't remember how Kisaki became one of Tokyo Manji's leaders and asked about it to Nado. Nado didn't know either, but he was sure that he was the reason her sister died in the first place. Takemichi couldn't remember anything about Kisaki in the past and thought that being Tokyo Manji's leader was the only way to save Hinata, so he made up his mind. Nano then shook his hand to send him back to the past, and after that, Takemichi realized he was sent to a public bathhouse in the past. Soon Mikey and Draken came and invited him to the inauguration of Tokyo Manji's 3rd Division leader. When they arrived, Takemichi wondered why they had another 3rd Division leader since Patchen was the leader. One of the members then told him that Patchen was in prison after killing one of Valhalla's members. He then told Takemichi that he might be the one assigned as the new leader since he had saved Draken before, but when Mikey announced the name, it was not him but Kisaki Teta. Since they were about to have another gang war against Valhalla, they needed more members and Kisaki had brought many former members of Mobius with him, and that was the reason he was appointed as the new 3rd Division leader. Takemichi was disappointed, as well as many members who couldn't believe what they just heard. Draken told them to accept it since it was Mikey's decision. Mitsuya added that Kisaki had apologized and showed his loyalty to the gang by bringing some former Mobius with him. Takemichi remembered the day Hinata died in front of him and got so mad he punched Kisaki in front of everyone. When everyone was shocked by what Takemichi did, someone named Kisuki Baji suddenly showed up. He yelled because he wasn't invited to the gang meeting while beating every new member that he didn't recognize there. Chifu stopped him and explained that they were former members of Mobius who joined Tokyo Manji after they disbanded their gang. Draken then shouted and said that he wasn't invited because he didn't show up in the last gang war, but Baji ignored him while kept beating Takemichi. After being left behind by his gang, Baji decided to leave and joined Valhalla. He even said that he would consider Tokyo Manji as his enemy. He then once again beat Takemichi and made him fainted. After that, he left and met the man with earrings from Valhalla. Takemichi woke up and found him alone with Mikey. Mikey said that Baji and him was a childhood friend. He said that despite his recklessness, 
Baji was a good guy. He was also one of Tokyo Manji's founders, along with him, Draken, Mitsuya, and Pachin. He then asked Takemichi to bring him back from Valhalla, so Takemichi agreed to it in exchange for him expelling Kisaki from the gang. Mikey said that he would do it if Takemichi managed to bring Baji back to Tokyo Manji. After all, he was not sure about Kisaki being one of the leaders of Tokyo Manji. He also said that from that day, Takemichi was officially part of Tokyo Manji. When Takemichi was about to leave, he accidentally found an amulet where he found a photo of Tokyo Manji's founders inside it. He then realized that there was another person who founded Tokyo Manji besides the five people Mikey mentioned before. The next day, Takemichi was thinking about how to bring Baji back when suddenly, Hinata showed up and asked him to take a picture with her. Takemichi asked if Hinata wanted to break up with him, to which Hinata answered that she loved him so much she didn't want to break up. He was relieved to hear that. Takemichi then met Akun and the others. He asked them about how to bring Baji back from Valhalla. Yamajishi answered that it was near impossible. Valhalla was a big gang known as the Headless Angel led by three people. One was someone named Hamashuji, the man with the tattoo of sin and punishment in his arms. The second was someone named Hanamiya Kazutora, the pierced man. The third leader was unknown. Shortly after, someone showed up and Makoto confronted him, but Yamajishi stopped him and immediately said that the man was Kazutora, one of Valhalla's leaders. Hearing that immediately made Makoto scared and apologized. Kazutora asked them about Takemichi and after that, immediately hugged Takemichi. He turned out to be a friendly person. He then asked Takemichi to come with him to Valhalla. Hearing that Takemichi was so scared, but knowing this might be the chance for him to bring Vaji back, he agreed to come with him. On their way, Takemichi saw a lot of students had been lying down in the hallway. Kazutora said that it was he who beat them. Takemichi found out that Kazutora was a student from his school too, but since he had never seen him before, he asked what happened. Kazutora said that he had just been released from juvenile detention. They arrived at Valhalla's base where Baji was seen being Chif Yu, his vice leader of the first division in Tokyo Manji in front of everyone. After beating him into a pulp, Baji asked if it was enough for him to be accepted in Valhalla. Takemichi then saw Hama's face and realized that the man he passed by when he looked for Hinata in the future was him. Hama suddenly asked Kazutora if he had brought someone from Tokyo Manji. Kazutora said he had brought him there. Hama then asked Takemichi if Baji was really betraying Tokyo Manji, and Takemichi confirmed it. Kazutora added that Baji would be a powerful additional force for the gang to destroy Tokyo Manji, and Baji said that he was happy to be part of them. Takemichi asked why he betrayed Tokyo Manji because he was one of the founders. Baji hit him hard while saying that it didn't matter. He also said that Kazutora was also one of the founders. He said that they had a grudge against Tokyo Manji, and that was the reason they betrayed them. Two years ago, Baji and Kazutora were really close. They met Mikey, Draken, Mitsuya, and Pachin in a cafe, and saw that Mitsuya had designed a jacket for their gang. After that, they went biking. It was revealed that while everyone had a sports bike, Mikey was stuck with his scooter. Mikey said that he would use his scooter until he could afford to buy a CB250T, his dream bike. When they continued, Mikey's scooter ran out of fuel and Baji was chosen to push the bike to the gas station, but on his way, he was intercepted by another bike gang. They confronted him and a fight between them broke. Baji almost won the fight when suddenly, one of them took a baseball bat and was about to hit Mikey's bike. Baji ran to save the bike with his body and got beaten many times. He threatened to kill anyone who dared to scratch the bike. Suddenly, Mikey showed up and kicked his scooter. He then apologized to Baji because he was beaten for protecting his bike. Mikey then beat the rest of the gang and took the leader to take their photo. One day, Kazutora took Baji to a garage and showed him a CB250T inside. They imagined how cool Mikey would be with the bike. Kazutora said he would give the bike to Mikey as his birthday present. Baji wondered how could they afford it since they had no money so Kazutora said that they could steal it. 
Baji refused to do it because Mikey would not accept the bike if it was stolen, but Kazutorith said that they could keep it a secret that they stole it. Baji was finally convinced, and that very night, they returned to the garage to steal it. They managed to break into the garage, although Baji was still reluctant to steal the bike. They went inside and were amazed at how cool the bike was. They were about to bring the bike outside when suddenly the garage owner showed up and beat Baji. Turned out it was Shinichiro, Mikey's brother. Baji was shocked to see him when suddenly Kazutora beat Shinichiro from behind with a crowbar. He fell to the floor, his head gushing fresh blood. Baji was so shocked and shouted while telling Kazutora that the one he had just beaten was Mikey's brother. Kazutora was shocked and panicked. Suddenly, he began mumbling that this was Mikey's fault. Kazutora tried to calm him down and said that he would be there for him whatever happened to them later. The police showed up soon after and took Baji to the car. Mikey then showed up and asked what happened to Baji who would just cry while apologizing for accidentally killing his brother. Soon, Kazutora was brought by the police too. He asked Mikey to help him but Mikey ignored him while holding his anger and disappointment in them. That day, Baji wasn't imprisoned because Kazutora replaced his sentence, and since that, he had been waiting for Kazutora to be released. After hearing that, Hama said that Baji was welcome to the gang, because killing Mikey's brother was enough to prove he was worthy of the gang. Kazutora then told Takemichi to tell Mikey that the next war between Valhalla and Tokyo Manji would be on October 31st. Takemichi had no other choice but to leave the place empty-handed. Mikey and the others then went to his brother's grave. There, Mikey confirmed that Kazutora and Baji were the ones who had killed his brother. Draken told him that they didn't intend to do it and Mikey didn't deny it, but even so, he still couldn't forgive them. On his way back, Takemichi met Shifuyu who invited him to talk. He told Takemichi that Baji must have a reason for joining Valhalla and he wanted to hear the reason from Baji himself. He asked Takemichi to help him because he dared to ask Baji back to Tokyo Manji in Valhalla's base, so he must have a reason. Takemichi confirmed it and said that he did that to save his girlfriend in the future. After that, they decided to work together to find the reason behind Baji's betrayal. They returned to Valhalla's base and were almost beaten, but then Baji showed up and stopped everyone. He asked why they kept returning there. While beating Shifuyu, he said that he would never return to Tokyo Manji and that they were his enemy. He also said the reason he befriended Chifu was because he was good at fighting. After saying that, he told everyone to beat the two of them. Somewhere else, Mitsuya and Draken met in a cafe. Draken wondered why Mikey recruited Kisaki, so Mitsuya said that he knew Mikey was reluctant to give the first division leader position to someone else besides Pachin. Chifu and Takemichi managed to leave Valhalla's base even though they were badly beaten. Chifuyu told Takemichi that Hamashuji wasn't the real leader of Valhalla. Someone was controlling the gang from the shadow. He then took Takemichi to meet Kiyomasa, and after meeting him, they found out that the one who incited Kiyomasa to stab Draken was Kasaki, who promised him a good position in Mobius if he did that. Kiyomasa also mentioned that Hama worked for Kisaki. There was no mistaking that Kisaki was the leader of Valhalla. He disguised himself as a member of Mobius to infiltrate Tokyo Manji. Takemichi couldn't contain his anger and fell to the floor. Somewhere else, Mitsuya was riding his bike when he was hit by someone and fell from his bike, leaving him badly injured. Meanwhile, Hama met Draken and provoked him. Takemichi returned to the future to meet Nado. Naoto told Takemichi that there was no information about Kisaki, so he told him to investigate the gang war between Tokyo Manji and Valhalla on October 31st. They then went to the prison to meet Draken. They met Draken in the prison once again, and Takemichi immediately asked him if Valhalla's unknown leader was Kisaki Teta, but Draken gave a shocking answer by saying that Mikey was the hidden leader. Takemichi couldn't believe it. Draken said that during the bloody Halloween brawl, Tokyo Manji suffered its first defeat, and it was all thanks to Mikey who killed Kazutora. Takemichi realized it was the vision he kept seeing in his mind. Somewhere else, Hama met with Kisaki and praised him for gaining Mikey's trust. Takemichi arrived at the junkyard, 
where the bloody Halloween brawl happened 10 years ago. According to Draken, Mikey killed Kazutora because he killed Baji. Mikey once again remembered when Hinata died in front of him and swore that he would be Tokyo Manji's leader to save her. Suddenly, he saw Mikey there and immediately ran to find him, but he was nowhere to be seen. He then asked Naoto to send him back to the past to save everyone. They shook hands and Takemichi was sent back to the past where he met Hinata on the school rooftop. They ate lunch together while chatting. Takemichi said that he was happy to see her and hoped that everything would be fine like that forever. Kisaki was plotting something with his division that he brought for Mobius when suddenly, Takemichi showed up and confronted him. He said that he knew Kisaki's plan to destroy Tokyo Manji and he would be the leader to stop him from doing it. Everyone laughed hearing that. Suddenly, Hama and his underlings from Valhalla came and surrounded them. Kisaki and his men were outnumbered and Valhalla easily beat them all. Takemichi was also beaten, but somehow, Kisaki came to protect him and told him to leave, but unfortunately, he met the rest of Valhalla outside and got beaten until he fainted. Takemichi somehow survived the brawl and was with Chifu. Takemichi told him that he didn't get why Kisaki saved him during the brawl, and he began questioning whether Kisaki was the real bad guy. Chifu tried to calm him down and asked him what happened. Takemichi then told him about how he could travel back in time, and that he was from the future, trying to save Tokyo Manji from becoming a criminal organization and save his girlfriend. Chifu chose to believe him and said that he would help him. He then told Takemichi why he believed in Baji so much. One day, Chifu went to another school to beat some senior students there to test his fighting skills. He managed to beat everyone in front of him, but after that, his friend told him that there was this one man in that school who was unbelievably strong and ruled the school. He was Baji. Chifu managed to find him in his class, but to his surprise, Baji looked hiki in his thick glasses, sitting in his chair trying while doing his homework. He then shouted at him and asked him for a duel, but Baji ignored him. He approached his desk and saw that Baji was writing kanji. Turned out that Chif Yu was quite smart and decided to help him so they could fight soon. He saw an amulet on Baji's desk and asked what was that for. Baji answered that it was an amulet given by his friend. That day, Chifu ended up leaving without being able to test his skills with Baji, but when he was about to leave the school, the senior he had beaten before called for backup. Chifu and his friends tried to fight them despite being outnumbered. He managed to beat some of them, but ended up beaten badly, and when he was about to be beaten by a baseball bat, Baji suddenly showed up and thanked Chifu for his help with his homework before. He mocked them for ganging up and challenged them for a fight. Chifu was worried about him and told the gang leader to leave him alone, but to his surprise, Baji beat him easily by hitting his head on the railing. He introduced himself as a part of Tokyo Manji and began beating all of them. He was unbeatable, he even survived being hit by a baseball bat. Chifu was amazed to see how strong Baji was. Baji said that Chifu was his friend, and if anybody dared to harm him, he would not let it slide that easily. After that, he invited Chifu to his dorm and gave him half of the noodles he cooked for himself. After hearing all that, Takemichi realized that Baji was actually a good guy and asked Chifu to take him to Baji's house. Meanwhile, Mikey visited Mitsuya at the hospital. He was treated for the injury after the accident caused by Valhalla. That night, Draken met Kazutora and told him to return to Tokyo Manji and forget everything that had happened in the past, but he refused to do it. He said that all his suffering was thanks to Mikey, and he deserved to feel the pain he felt. Draken couldn't believe what he just said, and told him that he had killed Mikey's brother, so it had to be Mikey who had a grudge against you, not the other way around. Kazutora kept denying all of Draken's words, and said that Mikey had abandoned him when he needed him the most. Draken then said no matter what he felt against Tokyo Manji, they would always think of him as a friend. Kazutora only said that he only saw them as his enemy and would destroy them at all costs. Draken then met Mikey and told him how hard it was for him to fight his best friend. Mikey didn't say anything and just sped up his bike, indicating that he felt the same. 
The next day, Takemichi and Chifu arrived at Baji's house and met him. Takemichi told him that someone would try to kill him during the brawl between Valhalla and Tokyo Manji and Mikey would finish that guy in revenge for your death. Baji suddenly beat him and said that he was unbeatable and nobody would be able to kill him. Takemichi denied it and said that he had to avoid coming to the brawl, but that instead made Baji more upset. Chifu stopped him from beating Takemichi. Takemichi then said that Mikey always loved him and considered him his best friend, so he had to stay away from the brawl for Mikey. Baji suddenly went silent for a while, and after that said that he would still destroy Tokyo Manji because they, even Mikey, were his enemy. Later that day, Takemichi met Mikey and said that he failed to bring Baji back. Mikey didn't blame him and said that no matter what happened, Baji would still be his friend. Mikey and Draken held a meeting with all Tokyo Manji members. Mikey said that they would fight Valhalla for their name and would be the strongest gang in Japan. He asked everyone not to hesitate even though Baji and Kazutora were their enemy now. Everyone cheered and burned with adrenaline for the brawl while Takemichi and Chifu were disappointed with this. On the other hand, Kisaki smiled because everything went as he planned. Both gangs finally met at the junkyard and the brawl judge told them the rules of the brawl, but suddenly, Kazutora beat him and said that they would fight till the very last drop of blood. The brawl finally broke out. Draken dueled with Hama, Mikey fought everyone in front of him with one hit, while Takemichi was busy running away from the enemies. Chifu then came and helped Takemichi. Hama burned all his underlings adrenaline as they began crushing Tokyo Manji, but when they saw how Takemichi kept fighting even though he was losing, Tokyo Manji fought back hard and managed to equal Valhalla. Some Valhalla members were ganging upon Takemichi when suddenly Mitsuya, still in a bandage, came to help Tokyo Manji. Draken on the other hand also managed to beat some of the enemy and even landed a hard punch that sent Hama flying. Kazutora lured Mikey to the top of the pile of junk. Seeing it, Kazaki signaled his underlings to start their plan. Takemichi saw that and tried to stop them but Kisaki was nowhere to be seen. Meanwhile, Draken was almost beaten by Hama. While chasing Kazutora, Mikey was punched by two other Valhalla members. Mikey called Kazutora a coward for hiding behind his allies' backs, but Kazutora ignored it. Mikey then fought the two Valhalla members who were protecting Kazutora, but when he was off guard, Kazutora hit his head hard with a crowbar, just like what he did to Shinichiro. Mikey fell to the ground and Kazutora shouted that the leader of Tokyo Manji had been defeated. All Valhalla members cheered, but suddenly, they fell silent when Mikey got up. Kazutora hit him once again and blood began gushing from his head. Mikey was held by one of the men who protected Kazutora, while Kazutora kept beating him mercilessly. Mikey asked Kazutora if he had finished his show and with just one kick, sent him flying and fainted. Kizaki called his men from Valhalla and told his men to continue fighting and rushed to fight Mikey. Takemichi tried to stop one of them and realized that the guy he stopped was the one who infiltrated Tokyo Manji. Suddenly, Kisaki and his men showed up and tried to defend Mikey. They shouted that they would risk their life to protect Mikey. Takemichi realized that it was the time when Kisaki gained Mikey's full trust. It was what he had planned from the start. Suddenly, Baji hit Kisaki with a crowbar while saying that he would destroy Tokyo Manji. One of Kisaki's underlings held him and threw him away from there. Takemichi held him from falling. Kisaki approached Kazutora, who was still lying down, and told him to take care of Mikey. Meanwhile, Baji said that Mikey was his friend and he would kill Kisaki for Mikey. All Kisaki's underlings tried to stop him, but they were no match for Baji's power. Draken managed to beat Hama, while Mitsuya beat many of Valhalla's members. Baji finally dueled with Kisaki and easily beat him, but strangely, Kisaki didn't seem to be afraid of him and smiled as he was beaten into a pulp by Baji. He then approached Kazutora to help him, but suddenly, he was stabbed from behind. He was shocked and didn't expect his friend would try to kill him. He fainted soon after. Takemichi panicked to see nothing had changed and the future was inevitable. Kazutora apologized for what he had done. 
Mikey, with an angry face, already stood in front of Kazatora and lunged at him hard, sending him flying and falling to the ground. Mikey asked Shifu to take care of Baji while walking towards Kazutora. He lunged at him once again. Takemichi tried to stop him but to no avail. Mikey ignored him and kept launching punch after punch. He shouted at Kazutora and blamed him for stabbing Baji while calling him a traitor to his best friend. Everyone fell silent. Nobody dared to stop Mikey. Takemichi cried, knowing his effort was in vain. Suddenly, Mikey stopped when Baji called him. Turned out he was still alive. He walked limply and asked Mikey to stop. He said that his death was not Kazutora's fault as it was his own wish to die. He then stabbed himself and fell to the ground. Chifu and Takemichi ran to him. Chifu held him in his arms. Baji told Takemichi that it was Kisaki who incited Kazutora to stab him. He realized that Kisaki tried to break Tokyo Manji when he saw him picked Kazutora who had just been freed from prison. He said the reason he killed himself was so that Mikey wouldn't blame Kazutora for his death. He asked Takemichi to protect Mikey from Kisaki and after that apologized to Chifu for beating him before. After saying that, he died in Chifu's arms. Back then, all of Tokyo Manji's founders were in a shrine. There, Baji was the one who appointed Mikey as their leader and Draken as Mikey's vice leader. Mikey was the one who came up with the name Tokyo Manji for their gang. When Baji was praying, Draken suddenly gave him an amulet that he kept until the end of his life. Before they left the shrine, Baji said that he was sure Tokyo Manji would be the biggest biker gang if Mikey was their leader. Mikey was devastated seeing his precious friend die in front of his very eyes. He kept calling his name and tried to wake him up while crying uncontrollably. Days later, Chifu visited Baji's grave to send prayers for him. He then took a cup of noodles, ate half of it, and put half of it on the tombstone while thanking Baji for everything he had done for him. Takemichi took Hinata to the park and suddenly acted strange. He faced her with a serious face and unexpectedly broke up with her. Hinata was shocked to hear that and immediately slapped him. Takemichi said that it was for her sake. He then hugged her for the last time and was about to leave when suddenly, Hinata called him and said that she would always love him. He could only hold his tears and walked away. Draken went to the prison to meet Kazutora, who was charged with attempted murder. He said that Tokyo Manji had forgiven him and would always welcome him back to the gang. Hearing that, Kazutora finally repented and felt guilty. Tokyo Manji finally did another meeting after a while. Mikey called Takemichi to come forward and gave a welcoming speech as a new member of Tokyo Manji. He said that he would be the best member of Tokyo Manji.